In this short video, we're going to take a brief look at RGB LEDs. I'm using a Piranha RGB LED for this. It's a four pin LED with a common anode configuration. We can connect it to an Arduino and using pulse width modulation, we can control the intensity of each of the channels. I'll then connect a small display so that we can see exactly which color mix is providing the output on the LED. The Prana RGB is a small LED with impressive brightness. It has four legs, one for each of the red, green and blue cathodes, that's the negative part of an LED, and one pin for a shared anode, that's the positive pin, and in this case it's the positive pin of all three LEDs. The correct pins are identified on the LED as the pin at the red cathode is tapered, whereas the remaining three pins have very square corners. So now we need to decide how we're going to wire this to our board. Because this is a common anode display, it means that we connect the anode side, the positive side of the LED, to 5 volts, and then we choose an appropriate resistor value for each of the three cathodes, which we then connect to the Arduino. And in this case, I'm using pins 11, 10, and 9. We have to take care to choose appropriate resistor values, and in this case, there's different characteristics for each of the three channels. So if we look at the red channel first, we see that it has a forward current of 50 milliamps when the forward voltage is 2.4 volts. That means that we need to choose an appropriate resistor to drive 50 milliamps through this LED. The way that we do that is we work out, well, there's a 5 volt drop if we were to connect pin 11 to 0 volts. We have 5 volts drop between plus 5 and pin 11. So therefore, we have 5 volts drop there. We know that the forward voltage for the LED is 2.4 volts, which means that we can then say that's 2.6 volts over 50 milliamps, so therefore we know we need a resistor of about 52 ohms. If we do the same for the green channel, we see that we have similar properties, except that we require a forward current of 30 milliamps at a forward voltage of 3.6 volts. If we do the same calculation, we find that we need a slightly smaller resistor, a 47 ohm resistor for this uh, pin. And finally, for the blue LED, because it has the same characteristics as the green LED, we also find that we need to have a 47 ohm resistor on that channel there. So that's if we want to drive each one of these channels at their absolute maximum values. Be careful with this configuration because it's slightly counterintuitive. If we set the anode to 5 volts, that it's always 5 volts, if pin 11 is high, or 10, 11 is high, it means that we get no voltage drop, which means no current flows. The way that we turn on the LED in this configuration is to set the pin low, which causes a voltage drop of 5 volts across the plus 5 to the pin and means that we get our current to flow through the use of the current limiting resistor that we design for each one of the three channels. So here's the implementation of my circuit on the breadboard. You'll see that I'm using four rows on the breadboard, rows 23 through 26, and you can see that I've got a red, green, common anode, and blue row. The LED is placed at 45 degrees in the breadboard to ensure that each pin is in an individual row. We then connect these rows to the Arduino, where we have the red, green, and blue rows are connected but through a 47 ohm resistor, to pins 11, 10 and 9 on the Arduino and the common anode pin of the LED is connected directly to the plus 5 volt supply. It's very important that we use pins 11, 10 and 9 on the Arduino because they are pulse width modulation pins. Pulse width modulation is the mechanism by which we turn on and off the LED or fade on and off the, each individual LED. It's a technique where we use a high frequency switching signal where we turn it on for a certain amount of time and off for a certain amount of time as defined by the duty cycle. So a 50% duty cycle means that we've got the signal on for half the time and off for half the time, but the effect, thanks to human perception of vision, means that it looks like the LED is on with 50% illumination. So by using pulse width modulation, we can fade on and off each one of the individual channels on the LED. So I've written this short segment of code for the Arduino to drive each one of the three channels individually. It begins by setting up the three channels as three variables, 
red, green and blue LED pins on pins 11, 10 and 9. And very importantly, these must be PWM pins, as I said before. I've also created this global variables, the fade delay and the fade step, so that if I change the value here, it changes in the rest of the code. There's nothing to do in the setup, so the only function that requires some code is the loop function. And this is quite verbose, and it could be written an awful lot more neatly, but I'm just writing it like this to keep it simple. So what it does is it goes from 255 down to 0 in the step, which in this case is 1. It uses the analog write function, which provides a PWM output to, in this case, the red LED pin and the fade value. So it loops over and over this again and then delays by the number of milliseconds defined by fade delay. So it delays by 5 milliseconds in this case. Essentially, this loop counts from 255, 254, 253, right down to a value of 0. Importantly, you have to remember that 255 written to the output means that we essentially turn the LED off and 254 right down when we get to zero we've turned the LED on. So through those 256 steps we've gone from the LED being off to the LED being on at a value of zero. We do this six times so the first time we fade on the red LED then we fade off the red LED we fade on the green LED, then off the green LED, and finally on and off the blue LED. In a previous video, I showed you how you can connect an LCD display directly to the Arduino. In this case, I'm using a 4x20 LCD display, the JHD204, and this allows us to see exactly what's happening within the variables inside the Arduino. We're going to use this to display the color channel values so that we can see exactly which values are making our LED appear the way it does. In this case we've got values of 0 to 255, so that's 8-bit values, and we've got three channels, so that's 3 times 8 bits, or 24-bit color, which means we've got 16.7 million combinations of these three channels, and 16.7 million possible illumination, different illuminations of this LED. So to create this and to add in this display, I've written some code for the Arduino. I'm using the liquidcrystal.h uh, library that's available for the Arduino. You can see the URL here. And I'm setting up an 8-bit uh, output that's allowing us to drive this display. I also have my three pins then for my red, green and blue LED pins. I have my fade delay and fade step as before. And I'm using a temporary variable color which allows me to switch from the red to green to blue channels. That's all that that particular variable does. In my setup, I initialize the display as a 20 by 4 display, and I display the text at the top of the screen, uh, RGB LED color. I set the red, green, and blue values initially to be 0, and then in the loop function, I loop around. I set the cursor to the top, to the, to the second row, or the, first, the zero to column of the second row, and I display the string red, followed by the value of the red channel. Now I have this strange code here which prints out spaces. If the red value is less than 100, it prints a space. If the red value is less than 10, it prints another space. And the reason for this is because I'm overwriting the values that I display previously. So if I didn't have this code and I display 255, when I display 1, it will appear as 155 because the 1 will be written over the first character of 255. So by having these additional spaces, the space space 1 means that it will completely overwrite the 255 with the value space space 1. This ensures that I don't have to keep refreshing and redrawing the entire screen every time we update by one illumination, one step illumination change, because the flicker will be quite distracting. We do this for the red, green and blue channel and also I have a little bit of code at the end just to change the values of the red, green and blue channels individually. Now you can set up whatever mechanism you want here to change the red, green and blue values. You could associate it with temperature or with, with all, any sort of sensor input but in this case I'm just running through the red, green and blue channels uh, independently. You use the analog write to send out your pulse width modulation value to each one of the pins. And remember, it's 255 minus red because I intuitively you would see a value of 0 as being off and a value of 255 as being on. So I've just simply reversed this in my analog write to ensure that the 
common anode display behaves as if it was a common cathode display in a sort of an intuitive way. We delay by a fade delay, and then that just ensures that we display the value for a certain amount of time. Otherwise, um, it will be changing too quickly. So that's a basic example of how we can use an RGB LED and connect it to an LCD display. And it allows us to create many, many nice and complicated applications that can use sensor inputs or connections from the internet to drive some sort of um, color or mood display that we can use for some applications.